Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to part 45 of our tutorial series on Total War Three Kingdoms featuring Cao Cao. We pick things back up on turn 99 in the spring season of 210. So as we approach turn 100, there is a few things to make note. So usually games for me last around 100 to 120 turns um, in terms of a campaign. We were not super active in trying to claim Emperor Seat. We took it pretty easy after we became Emperors ourselves and uh, let them declare war on us and Domain still haven't done it yet and we haven't made a move against them either. So this one's going to take a little bit longer and that's totally fine because many of you have expressed wishes to showcase more things and there's definitely a lot of things we haven't even unlocked or been able to showcase. So someone mentioned they really want to see Imperial units being used in a campaign. And in fact, there are some Imperial Sword Guards, which is an excellent unit uh, that we can actually utilize. Now the Pearl Dragon is pretty bad. If you guys are wondering what units are good, there are tier lists on the channel. So you can go check that out. Um, so I think for that sake, we will probably pick this one up during this turn, just so we can start utilizing them. There are a lot of other ones that we should probably tackle. We should probably get deployables onto the battlefield because we haven't showcased that at all. And we should probably get the forge upgrade so that we can actually get items from them. And then we can even approach tier five conscription. So basically we'll see how long this campaign actually will go. Now in total, there are I think around 83 reforms, maybe 85, I could misremember. But basically you need about 400 turns of gameplay to unlock everything. So there's a couple different school of thoughts on this and I'm kind of in between um, some of the thoughts here. So you could say that you're not accessible to everything and that could be a shame and some people get a mod to get, you know, every three turns you get a reform or speed it up some other way so you can get more things to try more things in the game. Sure, that's totally a viable school of thought. But then, on the other hand, I feel like if you could get all the reforms all the time, which is often the case with some of the more research factions, whether you are uh, playing as Yellow Turbans, where you can speed up your research rate so that you can actually get pretty much all your reforms every single game, then it takes away a lot of the strategic give and takes when you decide what reforms to go for. And it doesn't diversify the factions. Like, say, if I'm playing as a more warring faction, I might be going for the red tree very early on. And in this case, we're going for more of an economic build out. So we went for the blue and purple, expanded into a little bit of the yellow when we wanted corruption reduction and so forth. So only being able to take parts of the tree, I feel like that's part of gameplay as well. So I'm not entirely against it, but we'll still try to showcase as much as possible since this is overall tutorial series. So let's grab this uh, State Blast Furnace, and we now have access to Imperial units. Now there is something to make note. If you're not playing as Tals Hall, or you're not in the late game when you have a lot of high population commanderies, replenishment is going to be a big issue for you. So rushing these Imperial units is probably not a good idea, because they do heal up much slower. In our case, because we have access to Rice Patties, and hopefully we'll get more of them as we are expanding down south, we can go well above the 50% replenishment rate, thus easing out some of the penalties on the Imperial units in terms of replenishment. Thus, we can have um, pretty standard replenishment for them. Uh, they're great units, uh, very high stats, and we'll showcase them as we move forth, as our economy can also support them at this point. Now, uh, after that, let's jump back here into battle. We have a couple awkward situations where we left off. I think we ended in the middle of the turn after we cleaned up one of the rebels. Uh, they get to go back to rest up for the next group. We want to give away Liao Dong. Now there were some other opinions. I think people offered up certain candidates to place in these locations. I think Zhuge Xuan was one offered, but Zhuge Xuan is 70. And Zhuge Xuan is from Longya, actually. Uh, Zhuge Xuan is Zhuge Liang's uncle. Um, Zhuge Liang is not... I mean... Wait, did, was he in the game when we annexed Liu Bei? I don't think so. We didn't let Liu Bei live long enough to summon Zhuge Liang. I think that's what happened. So I don't think he's going to get spawned at all. Uh, but Zhuge Xuan is Zhuge Liang's uncle. Their family was originally from Langya, this region right here. 
but due to war they migrated ran to the Jin province and made a home for themselves over here and uh, he raised them because Zhuge Liang's father uh, died when he was very young so Zhuge Xuan was kind of the father figure uh, but there's not much records of him I think he was a Han official but a very minor one I don't think we're recruiting him he's a little bit too old and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a Gongsun clan in the north so even though Gongsun Du was pretty great character overall um, I am still gonna give him up and we're gonna put him in Liaodong. I think I can just click here. Yeah, there we go. Confirm and make sure he has no items. And we're going to. Oh, we can grant the whole family independence. That is wonderful. Does that mean he got to keep the wife? Let's try that. Do we lose Van Lan Lan as well? I think so. Maybe the kids as well. Oh, that's neat. I like that. That's a good mechanic. And then Midru can come back in. And which commandery do we like? I think Dong, Dong is the one that needs one. There we go. And then we probably need another Minister of Justice. I think it's plus two public order. That's pretty decent to give up. Uh, who is the most angry character? In our court. Yeah, Cao Cao's wounded. Not a good sign. 70 on the field. That's not bad. What about sitting on the bench? Those are spies. Oh, and apparently we hired a dead spy again? No. Oh, right. We hired the dead spy. That's why she got killed in action. We were trying to steal Zhou Tai, so we wasted some money. But then we hired a regular one. Uh, we're, we're getting him anyways. He's going to come next turn. Sun Qian. All right, we fired him. Maybe we'll, yeah, we'll welcome him back. Maybe he's on a cooldown though. No, he's fine. Perfect. Back to being Minister of Justice. All right. I believe most of our armies have moved. They didn't move, but I'm not sure where I want them. We were debating whether or not to wipe this army out, and I think we probably should. I don't know what level this is. Oh, it's pretty high, so they can't take it. Hmm. Yeah, the issue is we just canceled the deal with them, so I can't continue the previous plan. Um, where we could have just wiped that, and then wiped that with this army before moving here. Then again, Joltai is going to join us next turn. We can summon a new army in the north. He probably wants to go to south, though. Former Wu General. All right, we'll just stay here. I think we'll just summon a new army later. Maybe after we capture Liu Dai. There's a chance we can get him. All right, so that army is not moving. That army is not moving. That army is not moving. Seems like everyone else has moved, so we don't need to do much. And let's go take care of all the buildings. This is maxed out as far as our reform will allow us. And over here, same thing. Public water is going down the drain, mainly because of population, because it's growing way too fast. But that's expected. We're not going to worry too much about this. I think we pump out some officers to take care of this situation. I think if we start losing population, we can probably just give the population growth item on Miju, which is probably the best thing to do right now. Yeah, we don't need build turn. We want population growth. And that should take care of that. Boyan's going great. Sima Yi has taken over. We are going to build... Right, we were debating what the fourth building should be. And at this point, I don't think this is the best choice like this might be the best income choice this might be the best long-term choice hmm guess we'll go with no that doesn't make sense we only have one source of yeah the problem here is there's only one source of commerce and it's just from the inn there's no harb there's no harbor right so it's not like um Jianye or Danyang that's what it's called now 
So it doesn't make that much sense to go for that. It actually makes sense if we go for multiple income streams and just pump the population up because we gave Sima Yi a lot of population growth bonuses. And this is also a four county commandery. So I actually think this might be the best choice. Okay, so we'll do that. Yeah, we really need the forge reforms as well, but we're also two away from that. We're two away from level five inns as well. So a lot of things are just waiting on reforms at this point in terms of building. I'm gonna build this first, although I do wanna upgrade this and get a inn here. Wait, I think this is going to finish, right? Okay, so we can demolish this turn, and then we can downgrade starting next turn. Perfect. All right, corruption reduction pretty much everywhere. That includes you. Oh, we upgraded it. Oh dear, if we get attacked... What if we just trespass through? I mean, I'm waiting for them to go to war with us. This wouldn't be a terrible idea. Double trespass. Multiple turns. Alright. That's fine. All right, we have 54k. Uh, we did all the spying stuff. We just snatched a bunch of characters. We made sure we get Zhou Tai to join us next turn. If not, we can just extract him. And everyone else is kind of just stashing up points. I don't know. I mean, we're going to do the assassination. That's what the goal here is. And I think someone mentioned that interference is the one I'm looking for. So we're going to try this before we do the spying action. We would have enough. Two more turns, this will be at 88. We can spend 30 points to do that. Then we still have the 50 and the 100, and we would be able to assassinate faction leader. And over here, we have nothing to do. He has very few characters now. He has summoned himself onto the field. That is actually interesting. He should have a bunch of items. He didn't summon any strategists into the army, even though he's available. Let's offer ourselves to pursue a military appointment and see if he'll add him in. And let's check diplomacy real quick. Oh, Zhang Yang had enough. I mean, we could peace out. Because at this point, I'm just interested in stealing characters. Oh, we have so much stuff, we should be giving these out. Um, right, we, we could even... I mean, he has no land. That's the problem. It'd be a waste to annex him. Because if he doesn't have any land to start out with, we can't trade any to him. It's not like we can set him up. Confederating would probably be a bad move here. Because Jotai is not in the army. Oh, he is. Oh, okay. Regardless, peace is good. Because if she used that army to suicide into us and Jotai gets knocked out, we could run into some issues. So we'll let them live. Try to get some money from them. All right, maybe cash, because they're probably not going to stay alive for that long. While they are not willing to pay us anything. Okay, then we'll just take the straight up piece, because he has no item, he has nothing to offer us. That's it. Okay, we should be able to secure... Oh, wow. Right, we want this trade. That's the whole point of us setting him free. He has a balanced personality, so should be fine. Shouldn't run into any issues. We can probably also ask him to join war to just make him stay busy, like Zheng Jiang. Oh wow, doesn't want to do that. Um, maybe later? I guess right now he's just weak. He probably has a stone pig. We can steal that. 
basically every faction you create as a stone pig we can offer him one food they are poor they think they start out 2000 he might have decent regular turn income no he has decent but he's not willing to pay us i do want to make him like us so that's kind of the goal here i mean if anything we have food to spare and we have cash to spare you know at this point we can dump cash every turn if we want to make him like us there we go and Gongdu's trade is very interesting. It's very lucrative, 2,433. And he tend to like us because we share enemies. There's tons of enemies that we share. Um, I did not expect the old turbans to be doing this well. He probably reached Enlightened, so their prestige system, which allows him to trade with other factions and interact diplomatically, which is why we probably could form the Empire with him. Usually, oh, he didn't get any armor, because if they get armor, Yellow Turbans can't actually equip the armor on their characters, therefore it's usually excessive and we can usually get those. See, he's not rich, but he's willing to pay. Let's just even out to 5.0. Oh, he's not happy. There's no increase in uh, happiness here. Is it because we asked for it? No, he's just not happy. Okay. I mean, in that case, we go for like, what, 300? 300 plus? There we go. All right, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, we still have one trade agreement available. I think we're probably going to create another vassal down the line. Oh, he's willing to be an empire. I guess this can be the showcase part. Um, we have to delegate a lot of peace for him. Right, how many wars is he in? Right, we're in this war, we're not in this war. We're not in this war. We're not in this war. We are in this one, we're not in this one, we're not in this one, we're not in this one. Okay, there's too many. Yeah. The whole idea of empire, it's exactly the same as vassals except for empire members are part of a collective together whereas your vassals are kind of independent vassals and if let's say one member of your empire they're called subjects want to fight another subject they can't um i mean when they're vassals they can't declare war because they're both belonging to you as part of your liege you know kingdom but if they are part of your empire they can feud and basically, they can declare a feud on a fellow subject, and they can go to war with each other internally. You, as the emperor, can delegate the feud and make them peace out. And that's the main difference between vassals and empires. You still pay the same 20% um, tributes, um, except for what happens with the tribute is you collect all the tributes from your subjects, then you add them all up, and then you redistribute back 80% of the total divided evenly among your subjects, I believe. There's some sort of tributary math involved. And if you can get multipliers on tributes, then you keep the multiplier um, extra part. So if you have Zheng Jiang in your faction, she has some tributary bonus on her background. And what you can do is if you, if we, let's say we capture her, then our vassal income, our subject income would just inflate greatly because of her bonus. Uh, but for us here, if we only have one subject, which would be the case here, it's probably not worth it and might even be an economic drain on us. Although they fixed the math a couple times to the point where I'm not even sure how the math works at this point. Um, but maybe we'll see. We'll see a little bit down the line. If we get into a war with Kingdom of Zhou or Domain's faction, I think we'll do this because then it doesn't matter who we haven't been at war with. It will be a war with pretty much the whole world. And he will only like us more as terms progress. So I think this option will be always available for us because we share so many enemies. Um, but aside from that, we can confederate the Hun. I am interested in this because they have a lot of really good land, including a weaponsmith. And because they might have a lot of good generals. Alright. 
I have no idea. I mean, five commanderies. So this is commandery. This is not county. So let's say they have Shangyun, only one piece. That's one commandery. That would be also one, I guess, Kui Pass, maybe? I don't know. We'll be in war with Lady Wu, so we might lose some of the southern ones right away. I think we do this. I think this is definitely worth it. They're also at war with them, so it means they have some land here. Well, let's do this. And let's see how many characters we can get. And how much land we can get. Alright, so... We pieced out with Zhang Yang's faction. We confederated the Han. We have their former emperor. That makes sense. Okay, so we have a piece of land here in the Iron Mine of Badung. Not bad. A lot of Naman forces right on our doorsteps at war with us. This belongs to Queen Zhurong. Meng Hu is here as well. Oh, so we're gonna get busy. Alright, Yuan Yang, we just got her. She cannot run anywhere. She's stuck in the circle. She's gonna die. I mean, it's not my fault. She also has a grudge against us. She is um, Yuan Shu's daughter, I believe? Yes. We'll take the item. I'm so sorry. I would I would love to save her, but there's really nothing I can do to save her right here. She's stuck in the zone of control, and she's on march, so I can't like even attack to get out of the zone of control. There's just nothing you can do. Yeah, she's doomed. Who else did we get? Zheng Tai. Okay. Um, generic character in the game. We'll keep him. I think we'll keep a bunch of the characters. We got Ba Shangyong. We got the Ba farmland. This is north of the Yangtze River. So the Yangtze River is what divides north and south. And if the farmland is north of Yangtze, it's a grain farmland. We're more interested in rice, which is south. Okay, we didn't pick up any land here. I guess it's just these five here. I guess it is counties then. One, two, three, four, and then Kuei Pass would be five. And that's all we got. I believe so. Okay. That's not too bad. Because, as you can see, we're friendly to most of the factions near these areas. I mean, Queen Zhurong hates us in a couple areas. And we didn't expand by too much. Oh, we also got... <laughs> okay, we got Jiamengguan. Oh, it's very low level. I can level it up. It's not a bad pickup because now we can kind of sneak up on Ma Teng over here. Alright, let's take a step back and figure things out. This is a lost cause, right? There's no way we can get out of this. Like, these three ro armies outside is going to murder us. Right, they also have the, four, the fire cycle active bonus. I, I don't know exactly what season they activated, but they have a buff. Uh, if you never played Zheng Zhang's faction, uh, she has basically a mechanic where she can activate like fire resource or will the flame. It's not Naruto, don't worry, but um, it, it will boost your troop depending on what season you activate the bonus. I'm gonna just recall him. I don't need an army out here. We got ourselves a weapon craftsman, another one. Uh, wonderful. The armor craftsmen are not nearby. I'm gonna rush this just because I want my chance at legendary weapons. I'm interested in upgrading that. I'm not interested in that one. Shangyun's over here. It's not gonna get attacked. I mean, I might as well change this to a garrison version and then try to hold it defensively. We'll upgrade all the passes we got. They have not been upgraded by the AI, which is probably a smart thing to do. But now we also gave them the option to attack the pass instead. Uh, I mean, it's, I think it's a net gain. This is a lost cause. I think we just try to extract as much money as we can and just rapidly get it to level 1, which is the lowest we can. We made 300 off of that and we're going to lose it. We'll take it back later. 
Um, yeah, that's it. I think we got to go back and revisit diplomacy because I'm pretty sure a lot of things are now changing. Too bad we don't have a spy spot this turn because we're now seeing more factions. I'm sure we can find a turn code in Matong's faction. Right, we don't have much else to work with. Only a negative 20 now. Alright. Just want to make sure this is everything we need to do here. Shang Yong. I'm not going to try to defend this. If he takes it, he takes it. We're going to send the army to chase out all this. We're going to have to send one army to probably take Badong and then choke out all the Nanman forces trying to sneak over here. Now, even though the path Many people say it's kind of useless, and it kind of is, you know, it doesn't stop armies from moving through the river. What you can do is just ambush an army outside, and most armies that walk by will try to take the pass, and then you can get almost like a pass battle. Uh, but you actually do get a pass battle if the ambush doesn't trigger. Like, they attack the pass, the pass battle triggers, they're attacking from one side, your reinforcement comes from the other side, you rescue the pass. Or if they bump into your ambush battle, you get an ambush fight, which is even easier, and uh, you can fight them that way. Uh, but that's going to be the strategy here. I think we done enough. Let's continue. Alright, poor Yuan Anyang is going to get captured by King Meng Huo, who has two elephants. Um, we're going to get wiped. She's probably going to get killed. She's level 2. And we get to see a delegate. You can only delegate in the naval battles right now. I think that's going to stay that way. And she gets killed. And our pass gets attacked by Meng Hua's army. Our units are not even mustered, so I don't even think we need to try here. We're just going to give them the path. They might burn it down. They might not capture it. I don't know how interested AIs are in passes. Oh, they took it. And the Iron Mine is getting sieged. We expected this. Alright, poor Yuan Yao. Yuan Shu's line, it's only Yuan Yao's left. We can give Yuan Yao some land. Alright, Zhou Tai is returning. Wonderful. Shi Xin has a kid, Shi Ke, in our faction. Because we married a distant relative to him, so it's part of a ruling family, therefore they get to have kids. Dong Xi has left Shi Xie's faction. We can grab him. He's also a former Wu general. And I like how they made all the Wu generals. Vanguards. Definitely should change some of them up. He's generic in the game. Um, let's see. Not bad. I mean, like, I, I, I mean, I guess we just take him. There's really no reason why not at this point. We can check their skill tree. He also has a lot of really good... Okay, Yingwei is also not bad. Mao Hu? Luo Jun's faction. Uh, he starts out with Reach. Wonderful. On the other side of the skill tree. Not as nice. He has Reach as well. Yeah. All these are safe to recruit. I think we just snatch all three. Um, our roster is already really big. I understand that. But we might actually need a few generals just to hunt down some rebels. Like, Dongwei is going to have some issues, and these are just perfect for that. Alright, so obviously we lost some land. No big deal, as long as we don't lose this one. Um, we took Zhou Tai. Uh, he's not going to be available to us right away. He'll be on that one turn cooldown as he returns to us. Or maybe... wait. Oh no, he's here already. Perfect. Alright, I lied. Oh, he should get Zhang Fei's spear. Yeah, he really should. But he's not really a duelist, to be fair. Like, the purpose of using Zhou Tai is not to duel enemies, is to charge. Um, the whole idea of what makes Zhou Tai so strong in game is that he has this unique ability called Undying Vow. So as long as in the battlefield he has an Oathorn um, that's alive, 
then you can activate this at the battle. And once you activate it, he loses all his melee evasion, but he also stops gaining fatigue. He becomes immune to fatigue and becomes unbreakable and heals every second of the battle, which makes him undying. He's untiring, undying, and this was so bugged early on where the healing always ticks. So even when you hit zero health, you still get that tick of health. So he like never dies, so you can delegate him in battle against any size army, he will always win. If he's fighting in a duel and then the killing animation triggers where he gets his head chopped off, he will stand back up and continue fighting because his healing ticks back up. They fixed that now, but he's still very very strong. Before it was just ludicrous, like that was really broken. Um, what should we give him? Probably just more instinct? It d doesn't really matter what we give him. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. So we got him. Um, he comes with Scarred, which makes sense. I mean, he's known as a general who's Scarred. This is probably random, probably not game scripted. But if he has a game script for a wounded event, similar to Sahuldun, definitely should be Scarred. So I'm happy to see that. And Scarred is actually one of the better traits to pick up. So very happy about that as well. We'll be sending him out somewhere, definitely, um, to utilize him. But first, we probably have to continue some fighting. So this is really awkward because I was going to loop them around again, but we upgraded it. So we're going to have to do another emergency downgrade. This is just, yeah, this is awkward. All right, we're good. As though nothing has happened, he's going to give us another general. We're going to go take out Taiyuan. Now the sad thing is we can't reach it. We might as well march all the way through then. At least we get out of the trespassing. Right, we'll take Taiyuan. He'll loop here till his death. And um, we'll start upgrading it again, unfortunately. It's a repeated effort. Now we do have the empty slot, which is... Okay, we don't have any turncoats. That's fine. It's not end of the world. He did Chen Wu, also a very well-known Wu general. I mean, he didn't get summoned into the field. Unfortunate. Leading an army. I mean, we're just waiting for her to stash up points. This is going to be another murder husband situation. And she needs one more turn. Wow. They have one general. He's on the field. And the faction leader. They have no land. And the general is our spy. That's just unfortunate. Um, I mean, we can just ignore him. He's, he's taking up a slot, which is why I'm kind of bummed. But apparently there's no new turn coat, so there's nothing really to be missing out on. We're once again wasting armies in one spot, but I can't do much against that because I don't want to fight anyone here. I I could summon the army here. All right, we'll get this upgrade going. So instead of Zhuge Liang versus Meng Huo, we're gonna have Sima Yi versus Meng Huo. Uh, quite the alt history here. They really need to make a path here to make it easier to walk through Kuei Pass to get people to encourage uh, to walk through Kuei Pass, but we're going to take that off so that we can heal on our generals. We're going to make the crossing. I think Badong Lumberyard is going to be our target here. And we should be able to get the siege going right away. Right. So we're going to wait. We're going to pull the burned officers onto the same county and debuff them. So you want to get into the water and then just pop over. Uh, I clicked the merge one, but it's fine. That works. I will probably have to bring them into the battle because I can't night battle. If we could, I would night battle. That would help us a lot. Um, but you can see the archers have lost some ammo. He has high cunning, so I can't really de uh, reduce that by much. Uh, but 
The ones that's not on a strategist and the ones that are in the garrison lost most of their ammo. And let's fight this. It's a strong army, not gonna lie. A lot of mercenary troops, uh, which suffers typically from low morale, but AI gets extra morale hidden boost and we can't night battle to reduce it any farther. They also have some Defender of Earth, which is a little bit annoying, and lots of cavalrys. I mean, three. I mean, it's more than I want to deal with. So, let's fight this one. Alrighty, of course it rains. Um, we have some of our generals coming from this side. I think we'll use them. We have a couple of strong generals in there. I think Yu Jin's in there. Um, they might charge out at us. It's a very likely scenario, so I'm not going to place their units too close. We'll still use flaming shots. It's still very effective. And we'll just move up if we have to. Maybe even a little bit back. And the terrain's usually really bad on these maps. It's a basin in the middle, so the vision's really messed up. Um, let's hotkey these and have them tank up the enemy arrow. There are a couple cavalry, so we'll be careful. That should be good. I have no idea if they're charging, but they could be. And we'll light up a couple shots to see if they are. Any kills? Okay, no uh, two. But that's probably just the two over here. They might not be charging. Well, got to take out the towers anyway, so let's do that. All right, let's get the towers. Please hit them. I'm not going to... Oh, we lit it up. That was pretty accurate. I'll take that. Now it does overlap a little bit, so we might have to move up and take out those as well if we want to move our troops up. That also lit up. Not bad, despite the rain. Alright, so who do we want to duel? I think Chu is the best candidate we have. Let's send him out, just to see if we can find anyone willing. He might be. It's the only one that's possible. We also kind of want to see what the troops are doing over here. And we see one over there. Yeah, it's really weird vision setup. Okay, there we are. Out of range, perfect. That's what we like to see. Drag him out. Okay, I'm gonna move the siege weapons up to take out the towers nearby. It doesn't look like they're gonna charge us. So I'm just going to shift up real quick. And we can enjoy the duel. So that should have ended it. You know, crushing him on the ground. Uh, we have one pretty good ability here. It takes away all his melee evasion and deals tons of damage. Yeah, he's, he's going to die very quickly now. Because if you don't have melee evasion... Every smack's gonna be a 3k armor piercing hit from the mace here. Finish him! There we go. See, somehow we took out his leg with a mace. I mean, it's a pole arm animation. Makes sense with glaives, but with a mace. Very brutal. Oh, that is slow. Um, I mean. What else can we do? We can go capture some of these towers. We don't have to wait for the tribuchets. I think there's units behind them, but maybe not here. Maybe no one's guarding this one. I could be wrong. 
And also with the second we step here, I think they're gonna overreact. Oh, I, I, I'm definitely wrong. Did we lose our mount? Can we not lose our mount? Yeah, we didn't lose our mount. Okay, let's get out. Do they guard every single door? It's a little excessive, don't they think? Ah, uh, we found one, that's it. Okay, there we go. Let's get them to react a little bit towards us. And this way we can maybe snatch one that's gonna be unguarded. And we'll work our way around. Yeah, Axe Unit is not really a defense. Yeah, just let us capture it. We'll, we'll be out of your hair. Don't recapture it, please. And let's check back over here. I think they still have a unit here. Nope, negative. Alright, so much for needing to destroy them. We're all good. They recapture that one, but this is the key. This is the one that we don't want them to hold. Now our tribuchet is actually ready in position. So I think we just rain fire here. Yeah, circle formation isn't really gonna help. The AI think it's, you know, increased range block chance, but it's flaming rocks we're talking about. Look at, ooh, nice circles. Forming Audi or Olympic rings? What are we doing here? Ah, we need to hit here. Yeah, it's not level 10 yet. The spread is still a little big. But I did notice one thing, they don't have their range units in the front, it's all spears. So I think if we just move these up, we can shred them. And in case they charge out, I'm gonna just have them chill near the front. Where are they? I didn't move them up. We have poison, oh wow, let's use that. Uh, they recaptured it. Lame. Alright, we're gonna work together to grab that one back. Or we can just bomb it. Yeah, why don't we just bomb it? This one's gonna be a little bit hard to bomb. The angle is really bad. Let's see how accurate we are with this one. Not, uh, barely scratched it. One more volley. Wow. I mean, we are lighting it up, but it's not going well. Okay, now it's on fire. Switch targets. This one's gonna be hard to hit with all the trees here. See all the bamboos. But we might still be able to hit it. If we get lucky, maybe even in one go. Here they come. I mean, at the very worst, we're killing the units behind. And right now, it's that very worst situation. Who's getting shot? No one. That's a hit. Okay, we can stop firing now. She needs to pop out. We're gonna poison volley down this corridor right here. Oh, even though this one's really good too. See, the good thing about them not charging out uh, means they leave us with some really good opportunities. Gonna fire on this one right here. Nice easy spread. Boom, 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 boom. Alright, waiting for cooldowns. Let's go over here. How many shots do we have on them? Seven. I would like to kill some of the range, but they're too far away. Yeah, we'll just let the poison do its work for now. Wait for cooldowns. Pretty easy. This is what makes salt. Ooh, we're getting shot at the same time. Let's not. Let's get. But what if we go a little closer? I think if we go a little closer, nothing can shoot us. 
All right, so I want to get a piece of that cavalry unit. So I think if we angle it uh, this way and then aim at this unit, we should be able to hit almost everything. Let's see if we can poison them. Yep, we got them. That's all we need. We just need one of those arrows to touch them. That applies all the damage on them. Alright, we'll rotate back. They can take another beating here. And our archers can probably move up. We're gonna group these guys as three. Now the towers are all gone. We're gonna move them up. Don't fire yet. Alright. Get it nice and even. Oh, they threw traps on the ground? Okay. That's fine. We're never gonna leave, like, enter from here. Alright, our last volley will go over here. Probably just hit this unit and probably scratch that one. Alright, your job's done. Just unleash. We have enough arrows. 53. Spear warriors, not even spear guards. Okay, stop for now. I'm gonna move these up a little. Actually, we're gonna take three of them. Oh, there's some traps on the ground here, right? Hmm. I wanna move them up a little. Some of them might die just by stepping on spikes on the ground, but. Can't do much about that. Fire. Ha! The enemy army is just starting to flee. Are we getting shot? Um. By what? Archers? Why don't we just go back a little? Anything we have these guys that can tank arrows for us. I should probably grab all the generals, charge in, kill off these circle formation rather than waste so much ammo on them. Although we are shredding them. But it makes more sense if we like fire at the D militias and then send the generals out at the axe units. Right. What makes even more sense if we go after? Hold on, hold on. Waiting for the next group of the. The militias to enter. Do we run into any by accident, as in these guys? Okay, no one lost their horse. Keep moving, keep moving. Nor this group. Ah, oh, did we lose? Oh, we lost someone here. Alright, help, help her finish this out. Roar. Each of you chase one. Cavalry coming. No problem. March in. Alright, focus him down.
Just auto fire. Still a lot of spear units. Still a lot of range units. Alright. We gotta do our job. Fun. We'll get him. Oh, she is losing here. She's only level three. She actually will die. Oh no 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 no! I leave her alone. She's she's routed. She's routed. All right, don't. Okay, okay. She's fine. She's fine. She's fine. We don't want to accidentally like shoot at her either. Yeah, she's fine. Let's make sure they route, even though we might actually shoot her a couple times. 2,000 should still be fine. You stay on her, or that unit. These are probably all boys here. Alright, they route it. We win. We win, we win, we win. Over. Alright, she survives. That's the key. Our poison volley can't die here. Yeah, getting knocked off your horse, it's like a death sentence. Alrighty. Wasn't an easy win, but wasn't too hard either. Not much casualties. Ah, Lu Fan. We'll get him later. We'll release him for now. Yeah, let's not execute him. Build up some fondness first, and next time we'll get him. Alright, we have a bunch of level up. So, good thing she's now 4. Now she gains that um, resiliency. I think Tenacity of Steel is probably what we want to go for. We're going to not go for Patience because um, she's not going to be in a bunch of battles. Therefore, that's not going to active all the time. I think we want Night Battle. It's kind of what's lacking here. And we want this. So, give 70% passive damage resistance uh, to all generals within a 35 meter radius. Friendly generals. So, we're pretty much unkillable now. Uh, we can give him this item here, because it does give extra resolve and expertise. Alright, we got ourselves the Lumberyard, and we're going to go west. I think this army is responsible for this whole zone here. And we have another army here that's going to come to Tribi, Tall Tall's army. Meanwhile, oh, where's Yan Bai Hu? Your brother, Su Ren? Is Lady Wu? No, not Lady Wu, but very good armor. P possibly gold. Yan Bai Hu's right here. Your brother. Um, How do we approach this fight? We can ambush? Let them run. They, this is tough. Look at how many protective heavens we're up against. And this is a... Uh, I mean, we're not weak. I think we would want to ambush here. Alright. We're going to try to meet up. We'll delegate here. No time to waste. Level up. Okay. Okay, let's give some extra charge to our cavalry. And we'll continue to attack Yujiao next turn, down south. Now we're meeting some resistance, but we brought a second army with us. Um, this one's still a little bit injured from the delegate. I think we can wait here, have them catch up a little bit as well. So they can actually go together rather than separately, which kind of defeats the purpose. And we can go for those Imperial units that we were talking about. So this would be a nice turn to swap. And swapping is kind of what you want to do because of the replenishment being so slow. Alright, so now we have Imperial units. Um, these are only kind of valid on Sentinel Generals, so I think this would be a valid situation for us to go for them as well. 
Now the situation here is they're probably not going to be full healed if we swap them now, but I think we'll go for them. It's okay if they're not full healed. Now with the addition of these units, this really makes Sentinel Generals pretty premium for frontline armies rather than just the standard champions, which gets heavy spear guards at rank 6. Uh, a little bit restrictive, similar to this army, and I don't think this one's better than the Imperial units. Now of course the replenishment part is better, but aside from that, not really. Alright, we're hoping for no wars in the north. And I think we're good with all the armies. You can kind of see the dots. We're just pushing out. This is the rebel farming group, and everyone's just pushing on all borders. Um, including the north. We're trying to find them. We have another looping battle here. Which, if happens, we'll probably cut it out. Oh, Huainan's about to get another rebellion. It's okay, army's in place. Pop this upgrade. Runan's also... I mean, Runan makes a lot of money. I understand. But if we're going story-wise, if we want to make it up to Yuan Shu's family, I don't know why, but if we do want to do that, then we're going to have to give Runan back to the Yuan clan. Oh, we should probably build a private workshop instead of this. Yeah. Because that's where they're from. Runan Yuan Shi. And uh, we caused... I don't know. Did we cause the daughter's death? I don't think we did. Not our fault that she was in the river at the wrong time. I mean, even if she stayed the Han faction, she would have got killed. Not going to be on my conscience. Alright, now we can finally start downgrading. Hmm, food commandery? Jian'an? Shouldn't be a large city then. And Twin Tian's probably what's- oh no no no, state workshop. Need that corruption reduction, have no choice here. Jiamong Guan upgrade. Uh, they're going full peasantry here, which isn't bad, but the correct build will probably be... It'll be rice garrisons. We probably need Twin Tian and then State Workshop, so let's do that. We have over 1 million population, so we do have an extra build. Let's check turncoats. Any new? Nope. Any actions we can take? Stashing points, stashing points. One more turn. Don't really know what to do here, but okay. Let us continue. Oh, actually, diplomacy check. Yeah, is it going up? Yeah, 3.2. It was like 1.3, I believe. So we don't have to worry about anything here. Yeah, it's dropping very fast. If we take out a few more armies, I think we can get the abdicate very soon, and then we'll just get all the territory. Utugu maybe has this. Yeah, he's very friendly towards us. We can probably make a deal with him in the future. But let us continue for now. Our ambush failed, so we're gonna get a real fight front to front, uh, which is fine. Um, they have strong generals. Uh, we have a decent one in Gongsunzan, so we should be okay. We can probably take a look at the armor now. It's silver. Um, bronze weapon, not as scary. No weapon. And the bow got taken away. She still has a really strong ability though, so it's not weak by any means. Uh, let's fight this. Alrighty, so we're loaded up in here. Not a bad map, to be honest. Um, lots of trees. They're not exactly in the trees. Now they have tons of men, a lot of protector heavens. How do we make this better for us? We can actually change the mechanics of this fight a lot with guerrilla deployment. We can make them walk through this whole forest to reach us. We don't have foresight, so we can't actually see them when they're in the forest. We don't have fire arrows, but we have flaming shot. We can also fight them outside of here, but I don't know how much we can't go here. We can go here, but then we're in the trees. That doesn't work. 
There was a map, I think around Pengcheng, I don't know if they changed it, where you can actually fight on top of a mountain. That was a long time ago in one of our campaigns. That was actually really fun. Um, we can also angle it here. The whole idea is we want to use the fire to help us out here. And we can do that because we have guerrilla deployment on two of our generals. So we can set up the front line and the range component. And then the cavalry component is going to run around anyway, so it doesn't really hurt us by not having them out together. And the idea here is we'll just keep hitting the trees, light it all on fire. We have 16 shots, and we don't have a lot of shots. I mean, it beats a frontal assault. I'd rather have them come through the forest. We can even set it up so, like, the spear units are, like, scattered at the edge so that they have to run into them. Not too bad we can't make them super wide in this formation, but... Like, we can have them hide and kind of block them off, but we don't have enough units to do that, so I don't think that's a good idea. We go with a standard. We'll probably move our trebuchets up a little bit. The only thing is the archer effectiveness goes way down here, but maybe we can do something. Yeah, we're still playing around with the ideas here. I think we might settle on this one. I can probably shift them a little bit this way. Yeah, just so that one stays away from the trees. I don't know why this one tilted a little. There we go. All right, I kind of like this. We can fire up to here, which means we can start burning soon. And then we'll send these two generals back here with the army. Hong Sun-san will try to go out there and get a duel. Let's start from the opposite side. All the cavalry units can actually hide. Um, see, they're going to come out like this. And they're going to probably mostly come from this side. So we can hide like here. If we can get all of them hidden. And they can be kind of the surprise unit here. These will be the distraction troops. Let's go. So we're looking for a duel. It says none of them are willing right now, but they might change their tune when we harass them a little bit. Let's not auto fire. They see us. We're kind of in the open on top of the hill. They actually see us. So that's good. The only units they don't see are these, which is wonderful. Also don't want to auto fire. We outrange a lot of things. We're 250 range. This is the white horse fella, so it's not the normal units. So we can pick out a lot of these very nice range units and try to kill them off from far, far away. Now, we only have 24 units. That's our weakness, so we can't, like, do too much. But if we can kill off all their range before they even step into the forest, that's a big win for us. Alright, we'll kill off this group first. Should be relatively easy. Alright. We're not killing a lot. Due to the sheer number of units we have. But we have tons of ammo. We should be able to wipe out maybe one or two of these. And probably we want to wipe out both of the Defender of Earth. So we'll work on them next. So we'll harass this a couple times. They're going to eventually lose enough men to lose enough morale to give up. That's what we want to see, and then try to pick on them. As long as they're not sending their cavalry to our direction, I'm totally happy with where things are going. Oh no, what are we doing? Do not move. It's like the wrong thing. I wanted him to loop around. Alright, 
trying to chase us? I don't think so. I'm trying to pick off a few of the units. Namely the Defender of Earth. Hold on. If they're gonna step into the forest like this... I will keep looping them away. That's kind of the purpose of these units. You want to draw a couple units away from the enemy formation. Let's go. Time to start lighting things on fire. It's also units here. Probably want to light a couple over here, but we probably need a couple more shots here. I want to kill these. Alright, now we switch. And we'll try to follow with them so we can kind of get vision at the same time. That's what we want to see. Protector of Heavens. This is going to be one tough fight. I'm going to need my cavalry a little bit closer very soon. When they get closer, we'll expose ourselves. I don't want to do that right now. Yeah, the fire is not starting fast enough, but we'll take it. Because the routing troop will fall back and then we'll burn some of that. These. Don't get dismounted. Our cavalry peeking out over there. We have it pretty well defended. I don't think it'd be an issue. Fire's really going now, that's good. Alright, the roar wore off. Oh, 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 oops. Oops, getting shot. We'll harass them a little bit. Although I don't think we I don't think we'll do much damage. So we might as well just not fire. Now we kinda can't see. Fire? Okay, now we're gonna we're just gonna guess. I'm predicting some sort of weird flanking maneuver. Alright, we took out one archer, let's continue. We're just gonna drag that guy with us. It's a good trade. Alright, now we're getting the forest fire that we're looking for. Yeah, try to fight try to fight with us through this. Then we're gonna roar on them, which will demoralize them a little bit more. I don't want them to fire at all. We have two more shots. I barely scratched these guys, but we're burning that side pretty well. Then well, let's let's finish these guys off. Alright, we finished one group. Let's kill this group. And then they have no more bomb arrows. That's what we're waiting for. Let me kill off this group and I'll say yes. I don't mind the decrease of experience. Um, Wang Tzu. Decline for now? Alright, they show themselves. She's weak, actually. We should take that one. All 
All right, time to activate our cavalry. Let's make sure he's safe first. Run away. You can start shooting now, it doesn't matter. White drop. No one even crossed the tree line yet. She's gonna get killed really fast. Use our ability. There we go. Can we pick up the other duel with Yan Yu? Before he. Yes, we'll take that. I don't care about experience at this point. It did good. Just hide. Yeah, no one's even breaking out the tree line. The fire's doing work. And the archer is doing work. We have all their generals occupy. Let's roar on the group. And we have backup cavalry. We have one of their full size units dragged out over there. Their cavalry trying to find a gap, but we didn't leave any for them. Oh, even our archer is running out of ammo. Okay, this is a tough fight for sure. We're just gonna have to let the front lines clash and then wipe them out with rear flank charges. We're gonna have to use the ability when that comes back up. But these guys still have some ammo. Oh, three, one. Nine. Okay, a couple more shots, and that's it. They're also out. Alright, man up. Back off. Fan out. Alright, Gong Sun took out another. Can we get back on your horse? Alright. I think we can show up now. Take care of the axe. Go help Monson Zan out. We're gonna wait. Oh, we got wiped. Wait, how are they braced? What? Wait, there's no way they were braced. We just got wiped. How are they braced? They're engaging melee in like two different directions. Alright, we'll, we'll physically flank them. Like, if this unit get crushed from charge reflect, it makes no sense. Okay, good. This one wasn't braced. I don't know how that registered as braced, but we just lost a charging group right there. Okay, can we find an angle here? Was the angle bad? Like sideways? But like if they're engaged in melee, alright, all the morale's gone. I don't think we'll bump into that. At least not enough to like charge reflect. Yeah, some some got stalled, but no no no, keep 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 coming. Ignore that order. Roar. Okay, no charge reflect that time. They're done. Morale is cratered. That wasn't, I mean, outside the charge, I think everything else went pretty well. Alrighty. So we fought a couple characters who we want to recruit, that might complicate things, but if we do get to capture them and release, that would be nice. There we go, Sun Ren, not willing to work for us, but we can release her for some fondness. Her on the other hand... I think we kill. This infantry group, it's pretty impressive. I, I know they will probably recruit someone else to replace it, but that's not a guarantee. So if they don't re play, hire a replacement general, they lose these units. 
and at the very least we get to pick up the armor. But if we do release, we get faction-wide attitude, like diplomatic points, and that can help the abdicate. Right, so I think we still release. We'll tough it out. And we're on friendly territory, we'll heal during the end turn. Alright, and we have the very annoying fight with Han Fu. Uh, we've seen this a million times, I'm gonna just do this, cut it out, see you guys then. Alrighty, so pretty simple here. We beat them. We didn't catch him this time, unfortunately. Uh, he got actually killed by the towers, but he's fine. He has resiliency. He's a little old. We'll see. Oh, that is not good. He's actually friendly to us and got vassalized by Kingdom of Zhou. Ah, Jia Xuanzhi. This is Jia Long's son. It's been that long. Uh, we took in the mom after the faction got wiped, and now he has all grown up inside our faction. Huang Fu Ci. I wonder if this is Huang Fu Song's son. Okay, we're getting a few babies come of age. Just a quick check before we end our episode here. It's been running a little long, I know, but battle after battle. Can't really skip those. Let's see the kids. Oh, Huang Fu Ci. Too bad you can't check the family tree, but I think this is Huang Fu Song's son. That would make sense, I guess. Uh, Han Empire. And then Jia... Where is the kid? Uh, Jia Xuanzhi. This will be Jia Long's son. He picked up quite a few traits during childhood and teenage years. Not bad. This makes him pretty useful. Over 100 stats already. And... Uh, Basically, they're always generic, so there's nothing too crazy about these kids' characters. Even your own kids, if they are born after the game starts, are generic characters. Uh, we got an item from the battle. Uh, we'll be taking over Han Fu's land this turn, uh, ending him for real here. And then we're going to see who owns Xihe. Um, okay, Gao Gan owns this piece. Where is Zheng Jiang? Is Zheng Jiang all the way over here in Shuofang? No idea where she is. And then we'll end him. Pretty simple afterward. And then down in the central plains, it's pretty peaceful. We need probably need to summon a new army just to take this out and then sail down river to join the rest. Um, Dan Wei is probably going to take a couple of the passes right when the fighting gets started with Kingdom Zhou, whenever that is. We have a friend in Gongdu, which is nice. And we're getting swarmed by Yang Feng. Okay, so we probably have to. Give it up? I might have to just tear it down and then just give it up. I can trade it maybe to someone. I don't know if I can trade territory with yellow turbans. Uh, maybe he's enlightened enough to do that. But regardless, we probably need to let them take it so they wouldn't take this. And then we probably need to summon the army here as well. So probably two armies uh, we need to be summoned. And elsewhere, we landed here. We're going west. Even though Sha Mo Ke is right to our south, he's flying Meng Huo's banner, so he got confederated already. We're about to take Chi Bi. Probably in two turns, actually. A little late, historically speaking, but that's fine. They're beaten back, which is what we like to see. We'll let them heal up. No need to go and wipe them out and kill them. Uh, we will probably just head over to Changsha instead. They will move to Yuzhang, and we'll probably meet up somewhere here. Um, elsewhere, southern expansion continues as we're getting closer to the Emperor's seat. We don't want to take it. We want the full abdicate. If we take the Emperor's seat, they're no longer Emperor, then they no longer can abdicate, or in this case, Empress. Um, but that's kind of the idea here. And we'll just basically try to take up all these land in the next few episodes. We have to lose a bunch of land to Queen Zhu Rong and probably Meng Huo and the likes, but we'll fight back and beat back the Nanman invasion as they're doing quite well, right? They're out of the Nanman land, they're now encroaching on Han territory. We gotta teach them a lesson about that. Uh, in the north, things are pretty settled, and we'll see what happens in the west a bit later. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one, and we'll see you all next time. Bye!